Exciting news guys, the Grassfed Homestead is about to get some livestock again. A few weeks back I was driving up my driveway and I looked over into what used to be my pasture here that I was rehabilitating, turning it from napweed to luscious forage. I looked over here and I saw all this. I saw all this dead napweed that was here from last year. It made me think about all the effort I was putting into rehabbing this pasture. Remember after a couple seasons of grazing, the pasture looked like this? And now all this brownish stuff you see laying down on the ground, that's the stems of the napweed. Without having the grazing livestock on the property, that napweed came back fast and strong. So as I was coming up this driveway and I looked over out to that, I thought to myself, I need to fix that. And then I thought, I need some pigs. I started thinking about that pig breed series that I ran a while back on the YouTube channel. Started thinking about the different breeds that I featured and asked myself if I were to get pigs, what would I want? And what popped into my mind, Gloucester Old Spots. So I sent a message to Jennifer Hagee asking her if she just happened to have any Gloucester Old Spots, piglets that were weaned and ready to go this spring. She said she only had two available and they were mine if I wanted them. I know there's a bunch of stuff I need to get in order before I get the pigs on the property, before I can even commit to getting the pigs 100%. Some of the biggest concerns right out the bat, food, water, and shelter. So I need to figure out a feed situation. How much does feed cost? I'm not dealing with American guinea hogs anymore where you measure their feed out by cups a day. These are gonna be full size market pigs. How much feed will I need? How much is it gonna cost? Where can I get it? A couple days ago, I got answers to those questions about the feed. Check this out. I called my green guy a couple days ago just to get an idea on what the feed prices would be for pigs, for peas and barley, that sort of thing. And he told me that it wouldn't be until late next week that he'd be able to process the order for peas and barley, get them ground and bagged and all that. So I thought I have plenty of time to really decide if I want to do the pigs. If I change my mind in the next few days or the next week, I can call him, cancel the order, and he wouldn't even have gotten to processing it. That is until he called me this morning and told me, surprise, I did it early. So, I'm kinda committed now. Only 20 more times. The farmer wasn't available with his tractor when I got there, so it had to be done manually. Good thing I had my helper with me, my dance partner, because that's what dance partners do. Two pigs for about six months is a thousand pounds of feet, hopefully, and I got 20 50 pound bags, so food, check. Now I need to figure out water. Good news, I was looking for these barrels where I had drilled and put in these water spigots here, these nip water nipples for the pigs. These are barrels I got back in 2017 when I got my guinea hogs and this system worked really well. I just need to get the hose, get this thing sprayed down, cleaned up, and then I'm gonna put some water in it and make sure that that seal on the nipple is still good and that it's not leaking. Hey little buddy, what did Hi. you- Hi, I'm wearing sunglasses. Yeah, those are silly. Hey, what did you just ask me? Uh, I, um, I asked you why are you filling up the barrel? I'm filling it to check for leaks. Okay, 
What would you want to use it for? Well, I have something to tell you. Yeah? What? I'll tell you in just a second. I have not broken the news yet to little buddy because I wanted to tell him on camera. Any guesses as to what we'll use the, the water for? Your will pour it on my head? <laughs> no. Actually, we're getting pigs. Huh? We're getting pigs. I, I like sheep even more. You like sheep more, but we're gonna get a couple pigs. Yay! Back to the old farm. How's that make you feel? Makes me feel happy. I hope there's going to be baby pig. Well, we're gonna go see them later, and we'll see what they look like. Okay. So I have a couple inches of water over where that spigot hole is. We're gonna walk away from this for a few hours and see if it is all leaked out. It looks like I might have the slightest little bit of water coming out right there. If it's a really slow leak like that, that's not gonna be a big deal. We have the food situation taken care of. Hopefully the water situation is taken care of. We'll have to check back and see on that. And that brings us now to shelter. I'm in one of my sheep corral areas right now. This is the shelter I built them back in 2016. That there were some design issues here, but it works still. I'm initially considering putting the pigs in here because they'll have shelter. And also there's physical barrier fencing around here. I'm gonna have to check on this with Jennifer to find out if the pigs are trained to electric fence already. If they're not already trained to the electric fence, I'm gonna have to train them in here, put the electric fence on the interior, give them a good solid week in here to train up to that electric fence before we put them out on the pasture. A few years back, I made a video about training pigs to electric fence. If you check the pop-up bubble in the top right corner of your screen, you can click through and watch that video. That video was actually featured on Premier One's Facebook page. They found my video and said, this is an excellent example of how to train pigs to our fencing, and they shared it with their audience. Very cool. So that would take care of shelter and the fencing situation, which would be the next thing we'd need to worry about. Food, water, shelter, Fencing. Once the pigs are out on pasture, they'll need mobile fencing. So this is my portable electric pig fencing here from Premier One Supplies. Along with this, I have my Energizer. All right, I got my Energizer here. I don't know how good the battery is. I have it disconnected. I have no idea if this thing is still gonna work. We'll definitely have to try and charge this up and make sure it does. All right, so I have the Energizer batteries rehooked up to that solar panel. So it should be charging now. I don't want to leave this out here in the sun for too long and have the batteries overcharge if they're not completely dead because that could cause issues too. But we're just going to let it charge for a little bit and we'll see how it does. When we're using the mobile fencing and the pigs are out on pasture, we're also going to need a portable shelter for the pigs. I still have this old farrowing hut I built a few years back. I didn't use this one for my guinea hogs on pasture. It was another one that I built just like this. I actually just used one and my four and then later three, because one of them died, guinea hogs all use this one shelter. Now I understand the Gloucester Old Spots are going to be a much bigger pig. I don't know what size they are right now. This might work for the next few weeks, the next couple months until they get really big. I'm not really sure. We're just gonna have to figure that out as we go. But for right now, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get away with using this as a portable shelter. I just have to put a tarp over it, of course. With all that, I think we have a decent plan, at least enough just to get us started and then we can adapt as we go. So we're gonna check back on that waterer in a little bit and the energizer and see how that's going. In the meantime, do you wanna go see the pigs? I thought so, let's go check them out.
So this is the girl, and that's the boy. And they're laying on my little boar. And I'm keeping. And he's castrated now? Yeah, I castrated him last week. Cool. So this will make him a little wild. Hey, little girl. Hi, little boy. There's handsome. Hey, little boy. Somebody's snoring here. Isn't she sweet? This is the girl. The, so the pink one's the girl and the yeah. darker one's the boy. And then this is the boy. And you said they're about three months old? They're almost four months old now. Almost four. Yeah, okay. they're pretty big. And just for comparison purposes, that little one that's between the two, how old is that He's one? about a month. A month, okay. Wow. My little boy. Yes, yeah, see, they're pretty nice. Hey, little boy. And he doesn't even hold against me what I did to him. <laughs> Little Buddy and I really did enjoy getting to go see those pigs, and he certainly enjoyed bottle feeding that lamb. But when we got back home, I got wrapped up in all the other things I had to accomplish for the day, and I forgot to check the water barrel, and I forgot to set up the energizer to see if it's gonna power an electric fence. Here we are about 24 hours later, the next day, so we better get on that stuff. All right, let's check this water barrel. We still have plenty of water above that drain hole there, so we know we don't have a significant leak. It is wet down here, so it does look like we have a little bit of a leak, but it's so slow it's not significant. And so when I fill this thing up every day during the summer, it's going to have enough water for them each day. Water's good to go. Shelter's good to go. Just got to check out the fencing. I know it's a little windy guys, but see if you can hear that. Hear that clicking noise? The fence is working. I have one of those little voltmeters somewhere in a box buried away. I have no idea where it is, where you can just set it on the fence and test your voltage. But I know this fence is working because I hear it clicking. That means it's grounding out somewhere, which means electricity is getting through the fence around here somewhere. I just gotta find out where the ground is, fix that. But I'm gonna call it fencing. Good to go. Looks like it's grounding out right over here. That's right here, the clicking, and there's some green grass, and the fence is sagging, so I'm just gonna tighten that up. Sorry about all that wind noise. It's getting pretty windy here this morning. But yeah, I, I tighten the fence up. You see that sag is gone, so I'm gonna turn the fence back on. We're gonna listen for the click. Perfect, the only click I hear now is the energizer clicking that pulse. The fence isn't grounding out anymore. And just like that, the homestead is up and running. We are ready to receive pigs. If you can't tell, I'm a little excited. This has been, this is really cool. The pigs will be here sometime this week, so check back really soon on the YouTube channel here so you can see them coming to the homestead. The grass-fed homestead is alive. Oh.